Hello, 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 everyone. It is Teresa from Teresa Silhouettes, where all things art. My love sharing art from my heart and teaching creatives and crafters how to pay for fun and profit. Hello, everyone. I apologize for being a few minutes late. I will get to that in a minute. Um, oh, crazy. Anyway, um, I have my vertical canvas. We're going to trace it on, but um, I need to open it first. Sorry if that's a little noisy. Anyway, I have daughter number two here. She's going to paint with me. She's going to be walking by. There she is. Show them your shirt. <laughs> I'm only here to establish my alibi. Cute one, right? You guys know I'm um, a true crime buff. Anyway, um, oh, can you go grab my phone, please? Okay. Oh, you did? Where'd you put it? Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, sorry, okay. Is Sam okay? He's gone. Oh. Um, anyway, um, here we are. I'm going to get ready. Let me see what's going on here. I'm a little... Do you need your own device to watch? Uh, I'm a little um, kerfuffled. So I had to bring um, kits to my library. Came home from work. Um, me and APHFM loaded them up. Oh, Sid, you need water and I need my water from the mudroom. Um, we loaded them up. We drive them up to the library. We carry them in, blah, blah, blah. And then we're like driving back here. It's not far. I could walk to my library if I wanted to, but I couldn't carry kits there. And we're coming back, and all of a sudden I'm like, it's 6.58, holy moly! So, anyway, here I am. I needed to remind someone, it's probably too late now. Um, and I forgot. Uh, sorry. Sorry for the late reminder. Okay. Anyway, turn this off and there we go. Okay, so I have my tracer. It basically, it fits lengthwise, but it doesn't fit widthwise. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. You will need a straight edge or a ruler of some sort. I have my ruler. And I'm going to change my camera and then we will get started. So here we go. Okay, so I lined mine up according to the bottom because that seemed to be a decent enough place to start it. I eyeball mine and make sure it's straight. It's fairly straight. It looks good. And I'm going to get a piece of tape and I'm only going to put a piece of tape on the bottom. And this is like makes like a hinge. Okay. Then I'm going to get my well-worn and well-used piece of graphite paper and slip it in underneath like this. Okay? Try not to jostle my paper around too much, but there we go. I know this tall guy, he doesn't fit on the screen as well as we would like him to. All righty. Okay. Now I'm going to um, pick a tool, a pencil, a pen. If I use a pencil, I use a pencil that has a rather dull point. Otherwise I use this stylus. And I'm just gonna start um, wherever, pick a point to start. I'm gonna start on his feet and trace around. Be sure when you use your graphite paper that you put the shiny side facing down. My canvas is a little bigger than my surfer, so I'm actually gonna have the whole surfboard on here, so I have to freehand that a little bit. Put in his beard. So yeah, make sure you have the shiny side facing down. I can't tell you guys how many times I have traced a canvas only to realize I just ended up tracing it to the back side of the tracer because I had the graphite paper the wrong way. I'm do these hibiscus. I love now painting hibiscus. 
It's not a flower I painted early on in my painting, but it's a flower that I paint a lot of now. I love them, and I love how you can really just do them all kinds of colors, and they're so tropical. And you guys know I love the beach. So I've been like loving hibiscus. Okay, and then this little flower, you guys can do this any color you want. Basically, you know, I always tell you, you can do your project any color you want. Okay, so now because my canvas is quite a bit wider than my tracer, and in order to make it wide enough, it would have been too tall, so we have to keep a proportion. I have got this straight edge, and I'm using it for all these lines because some of our lines go off the tracer and onto the canvas like that so I'm using this straight edge to keep my lines fairly straight while I do this Let me put you guys down a little bit okay Oh, you don't need that. Because you don't need that. Because I don't care about getting paint up in there. Okay. okay, and I am just... Oh, almost missed this little section in here. Okay. And I'm just using... Um, where were we supposed to get the gnome? Oh, Sherry, so if you scroll down... There are two posts. Um, one says tracer for the beach gnome, and you had to print it out. And the other says supply list for the gnome painting. Sorry for the noise. Um, and they are posted in there. And ordinarily, at the beginning of the month, I do also provide a kit. Um, and that's only available for a week when I first post the painting of the month because then obviously I need time to put them together and get them out to people but um, I don't know if you have access to a printer but you can scroll I guess it would be down at this point and there will be a post for the tracer and a post for the supply list okay um, if you want to tackle this project on a smaller canvas I bet um, you could freehand it. I'm adding the stripes too to my surfboard. I wasn't going to because I thought I was going to do my own design on the surfboard, but I don't think I'm going to do that. So, Amy, hello, hello, hello. I'm going to paint this weekend. I didn't have a chance. Okay, are you going to stay and watch, Amy? Or are you, you you're bugging out? I have a, my daughter in here painting with me as well. She's behind me. Haha, -ha, no free hand for me. <laughs> I understand, Sherry. Well, you know what? You can watch and then you can paint it yourself or um, the this replay is always here. If you go in the guides, there are replays from... Um, I've probably done about 15 or 16 projects in here and they are on all the guides and each guide has um, the tracer the supply list and then the video you can't find it let me see if I can you know what I'm gonna ask my daughter to find it and tag you in it what are you using yes this is carbon paper look how many times I've used it it lasts forever and ever and ever. I get this. You can get this at Michael's or Amazon. Um, sometimes I cut these sheets. Sometimes I don't. And literally, I have used this dozens, scores, scores of time. And it just, um, it lasts and lasts and lasts. It's really the quickest, easiest way. There are other ways. I've, I've, I have a video in here. If you were patient enough to scribble on the all the design on the back of your tracer, scribble with the pencil, you could then, Sherry, I'm gonna either tag you or get my daughter to tag you. 
or Amy. Amy, if, if you know, if you can help, please, if you know or you see the um, tracer post and the supply list post, can you tag Sherry Judicki Krosky? There we go. We're, we're, we're all friendly here. We all want to help. Anyway, so yes, I get this at my, I've gotten this at Amazon and Michael's and it lasts forever. Literally, I use it for kits. I have two sheets, some, whatever. Anyway, I could go on and on. But anyway, yeah, if you were patient enough um, to scribble on the back of all the lines on the tracer with a pencil, and then you laid it down on your canvas just like I did just now, and went over it, the pencil markings from the back would transfer from the back of the tracer onto your canvas. Okay, so I think I have the whole thing. I didn't put in these stripes. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'll just eyeball them. And I'm going to now put this aside. Okay. All right, let me get out some paint. I'm gonna start with my black and my patina. Starting with black and patina, honey. Do you want some? Do you want me to just do you a plate? Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start with the black, and what I like to do, and I do this, I'm, you know, I'm, I've been painting for quite a bit of time, but I still do this. I like to look at my drawing and um, figure out what's, when I have a design like this, I want to know right up front what sections are what color. So... I will look at my drawing. I look at the which daughter. Oh, um, Sydney. Sydney's home for the, a month. I think. Um, have you? Did you meet Samantha, Amy? I don't think you met Samantha. You might have met her. You might have met her at Pinners. Anyway, okay. So when I have a, a a design like this that jumps around and has two different colors, it's easy to get confused. So I will look at my picture. And I will come to my canvas, and the first thing I will do is decide which spots are going to be which color. And I will put a little bit of paint in there. Oh, okay, she dropped me off one day. I didn't know if she, because she did pop in. Oh, you know what I do need? I need lines over here, because, um, again, mine was wider. Than my drawing, so I have to match up the lines on either side to go with the sections. Okay. So I like to come right around and mark out so my eye is automatically blue, black, blue. See, now I have a problem because I added a section. Blue, black, blue, black, blue, black, blue, black, blue, black, blue. Black, blue. Hmm. All right, let's see what I'm going to do when I get over there. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it was smart, but now that I had to adjust my um, tracer to fit my canvas, it might not work out the way it's supposed to. But I'm going to get painting, and then we will figure it out. Yeah, when I have a geometric shapes and stuff, it's so easy to get sidetracked. And when you're looking, you're, when you're painting, your eyes are only drawn to like a section of the painting. It's really easy to get confused and put colors where they're really not supposed to be. And with black, I always say paint, it's paint, you can fix anything. And that may be true. 
but with black, it's really difficult. So if you see, I am just going in here and I'm starting in the black sections. I'm using about a half inch wide flat brush and I'm just painting in these sections with my black paint. I paint the way I color and I like to go in and fill in my outlining first and that keeps me on track as well. So my eyes go where they need to go. And now because of this cool design on the back of this canvas, I mean on the front of this canvas, that I am doing the sides as well. So wherever there's black in a section, and then whenever there's blue in a section, I'm gonna paint on the edge as well. And now you guys, if you didn't want to do it black, you don't have to. If you wanted to do your outside like this, like say when you go to paint it on the weekend, or Sherry, when you decide to paint it, you can do whatever colors you want. You can do it white and blue. You can do it blue and purple. I am not the art police. I want you guys to be happy with your paintings. And you know, maybe, maybe there's a some place you want to hang it, your porch, your bathroom, whatever. Maybe you're gonna give it to someone. I don't know. And their favorite color is green. Maybe you would make one of the big sections green. You would do the sections green and patina, and then do the little lines black. So totally up to you. I know when we we're first getting started, and I was the same way when I was first getting started, my colors had to be the color because I had to be able to tell if I was doing a decent job or not. Now, I don't really worry if I'm doing a decent job. I measure the job I do by how I feel when it's done. And if my painting session um, brought me a little stress relief and um, a little happiness and joy and I was able to share that happiness and joy with other people that I was sharing my painting with that's good that's how I decide how good my painting was or wasn't it's how, how it makes me feel after so now I use colors that make me happy I am using the same brush and this is about a half inch wide flat brush I have not changed the brush yet I might at some point um, and when I say it's about half inch wide this way and it kind of fits nice in these sections if you use um, a smaller canvas because of the nature of nature of this design I think it's important to use a vertical canvas a canvas that is um, taller than it is wide and that's any canvas depending on how you turn it um, but you want the orientation of this one to be tall but if you use a smaller canvas you might need to use a smaller brush um, this one is about 16 by 10 And again, I'm just painting the edges here as well. So now I'm going to have to decide what I'm going to do over here. I might make this section because this section over here is small. Maybe I'll change this line. and add a section in here so blue black blue black yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make three sections out of these two sections here it's gonna be off a little bit but that's okay and again I had to add in the rest of my um, 
surfboard on there. So I trace that line as well. And by the way, Sherry, this is also the second um, gnome that we did. We did a spring gnome. Um, and I think it was in April. You have to look in the guides for it. I'm not sure which one, which if it was April or March. Um, and we will be doing two more. I think I'm going to do a fall one and a winter one. When I like to get nice straight lines, I use my brush standing up on the chisel edge. And when I'm tr filling in, I use it flat like a paintbrush. Okay. Now, blue. I'm going to change this up a little bit. There we go. That'll work. And doesn't have to be perfect. Blue, black. And I just added lines in there, so I'm not going to worry about um, going over my pencil marks with black paint. Want me to do yours too? Yeah, because yours got traced like mine. Unless, I don't know, can you do yours opposite? You fix it all by yourself? Wow, impressive, thank you. You could have fixed mine. Awesome, Sherry, that's perfect. Because we'll be doing four gnomes. I just got a pack of um, 11 by 14 canvases. I think I ordered 24 of them. The price was right. And the way I go through canvases... I couldn't resist. Plus it was free shipping. I know often people have to charge for shipping. I get that. I pay for shipping. I get char I charge for shipping. Um, but when we can get free shipping, don't we love it? We're almost done with our black sections. Then we're gonna rinse our brush and move on to the blue sections. I used a straight edge for my lines, but once we get a brush to them and stuff, they're not gonna be perfect and that's okay because this is just for fun. We'll do these in between lines once our blue and our black pretty much dry. And they'll, they'll end up being about a brush width thick. Um, I'm not going to be held to the size that they are. And that's okay. So now I'm going to give my brush a good clean. And we'll do our patina. Oh yeah, who doesn't love free shipping? Okay. This part is always like, I know I have paint in my hand and we're painting and I love to paint, but I'd rather be painting 
the gnome and the elements. I like it when our design really starts coming to life. And again, if you see, I am just using my brush on the chisel edge and marking out where my blue is going to be. It's a little bit harder to get around the flower. I'm not going to worry about being perfect with my flower. That's why we do the flower after, because then we can always clean up our edges um, when we paint the flower on top. So if you're painting and you're trying to get around the flower and you're like, oh, I messed up, don't fret, don't worry, because when you go to add in your flower later on with a darker color, it'll be fine. And again, I'm going to do my edges the same as the face of my canvas as I go around. Sometimes I wait and I do my edges after the class, especially if I'm going to do them the same color. If it's just one color and I need to paint the edges because I don't think I need to um, spend your guys time. I hate to say waste your guys time, but spend your guys time painting edges. But because of this geometric design and how it's the edges are going to look when the painting is done. I feel like it's important to do them as we go along because you're going to see how cool it looks when we're done. Or you may be like, oh, that's a little too much for me. And when you paint yours, you might decide to just do your edges in one color. And that would be either color that you choose for the background like this. Totally, totally up to you. Your art, your way. My assistant painter next to me here is doing an awful lot of in and out with the door. Next thing you know, my husband will mow the lawn and the dog next door will start barking and barking and we'll have all kinds of noise going on in here. And then the little boy likes to play hockey and listen to the music when he's outside and then I'll get flagged by Facebook for copyright violation because we can hear the kids music in here while I'm on a live. I would never complain though. They're great neighbors and um, I love when kids are outside playing. The little boy is really into hockey and their yard is right next to ours on the other side of the fence. And the little boy will be out there. The little boy, he's probably like eight or 10. He will be out there playing hockey for hours with the radio blasting. And he listens to decent music. I don't mind the music, but Facebook will. I couldn't play background music here if I wanted to because of the copyright laws. There we go. So what is new, everyone? What are everyone out for dinner tonight? Did anybody eat yet? What time zone are you in, Sherry? I forget where you live. Are you from New Jersey? You one of my New Jersey people? Nothing yet, I can't decide. When I can't decide, and I'm I'm really good at um having cereal or peanut butter and jelly on graham cracker for dinner. If there's nobody else here and my husband's working nights and my daughter lives in Costa Rica, I'll just come home and have a bowl of cereal or maybe um, peanut butter and jelly on a toasted English muffin or in graham, graham crackers. When it's cool out, I'll have a cup of tea. When it's hot out, I have some chocolate milk, 
like a 12 year old and that's it today i had the pleasure of going to lunch we went to panera bread with a friend of mine that i have not seen in almost a year she lives in florida she's up here for a month and i haven't seen her since last july when her son got married so it was a nice surprise when I heard from her the other day that she was here and would I like to get lunch. So we met up by my work and scooted out to Panera Bread. And I had, um, they said it's new, but I wouldn't know. I have thought about it, but I don't have milk. Well, I think so. I think not having milk is much better than like what happened to me the other night when I poured myself a bowl of cereal, poured in the milk, got a magazine, sat down with my cereal, took one bite and was like, oh no, the milk was sour. What? It's spoiled. Yeah, so that went in the garbage. So I'm sorry you're out of milk, but I'm glad you didn't accidentally put sour milk in your cereal. Anyway, back to regular programming. So there we go. Um, yeah, so anyway, so they said, Panera Bread said it was new. It was a crunchy, crunchy chicken Asian salad. It was really yummy. It had like a citrus dressing on it, and it had edamame and romaine and I don't know how they made them and what made it crispy was crispy carrots. I don't know how they made crispy carrots. I'd love to know. Oh, I could probably Google it. I currently have that in my fridge. It's going in the trash tonight. Yeah, I know it happens. It's like, you don't want to spend the money on a small container of milk because it's such a rip off. So you buy the big container of milk and then if you don't drink it, it goes sour. I did start drinking almond milk, but I was out of it the other night, so I had to use the regular milk, but it ended up being sour. But I like the um, silk almond milk. I put that in my iced coffee now, and I can have it in my cereal. It's pretty good. I use the original one, not the vanilla one. It has less sugar, and it, it lasts quite a bit longer than regular milk. You liking these colors, you guys? I started getting the half gallon, I guess. To, yeah, I know, but I, I know, but then like you get a quart and it's the same price almost as a half a gallon. It's crazy. I remember my, my mother being on this kick because she had an issue with the milk too. I guess when you're older and you don't drink a lot of milk. But my mother actually, she wasn't that much older. Now that I think about it, because my mother, my mother passed away when she was 64. So, so when we, the story is gonna tell you about the milk, she was probably my age at the time, but she didn't like the milk going spoiled either and didn't drink enough of it, but she liked always having milk for her coffee. So she started making powdered milk and it was so disgusting. I mean, I was already married at the time, but. Like when we went there for things, I'm like, Ma, I guess I'll just bring milk when we come on a Sunday or for a holiday or something because I'm not drinking this powdered stuff. She would make it in a mason jar as she needed it and shake it up. So she didn't mind it. I minded it. And here I'm thinking she was doing it when she was old, but she wasn't that old. She, my mother didn't get the chance to get old. I know, gross, right, Amy? <laughs> you know. So, okay, we have our backgrounds done of the background, our geometric background. Okay. If you guys have any questions that I miss while I am painting away here, um, don't be insulted. I just missed them. They scrolled by, whatever. I do come back afterward and um, answer any questions anybody has. So, 
You guys might be having a hard time seeing my trace, but I can see it pretty good, so I'm okay with that. Now I'm gonna get out, this is one of my very favorite colors. It's called Fire Coral. It's not too pink, it's not too peach, it's not too orange. You could do your hat in orange if you like. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. It was the color on the list, but like I said, you're never married to the colors that I put on my list, it's only suggested. Look how pretty that is. I don't know, can you see? it's kind of got a glare to it. There we go. It's peachy, corally, pinky, I don't know, but it's one of my favorite colors. And I think it's gonna go really good with the patina. I have not changed my brush yet. I've cleaned it and washed it, but I have not changed it. I'm still using the same half inch brush. And now I'm going to do um, the background of the hat. And again, I'm holding my brush on the chisel edge and I want to make a border for my hat. So when I start to paint it, fill it in, get my coverage, my eye knows where it belongs. I just feel like it's easier. It's just my way of doing it. You can do it your way. Maybe um, because it helps me stay on track because I'm talking and responding. I don't know. But I just find it much easier to define the area that I need to paint before I get started. I'm gonna jump over my flower right here and come around. And I don't worry too much about being perfect because again, like I said with our flower over here, we're gonna come back in and we're gonna do our hibiscus and we're going to do um, the daisy flower, I guess, that's on the end of the hat and that'll take care of any little mishaps we might have with our brush. Even here, I went over the black a little bit, but you'll see when we do our outlines. Oh, good. Oh, you're not, oh you, I thought you said you got good. You're not good. You know what, Amy? Just try, uh, just practice. Even if you practice, and I can totally understand, if you don't wanna waste paint, Get um, colored paper or a brown paper bag and use water. Dip your brush in the water. You need um, something that has color. You can't use white copy paper. So you would need a um, brown paper bag, a lunch bag, um, construction paper. You can buy a big pack of construction paper, fairly cheap, um, cardstock, whatever it is, and Use your brush, dip the brush in water, and then just practice your straight lines. You can even draw the lines and then practice following them with water on the brush. And this way you don't feel like you're wasting paint. Or maybe you have a color that you're never gonna use. You had it, it came in a variety pack, but it's, you know, it's something that you don't like. Um, either way, but yeah, and just like draw a few lines Draw a few straight lines and draw a few snaky lines. And just practice with the water and the brush. Uh, I'll tell you a hint. When you are doing a snaky line, you're not gonna be able to do the whole thing. So you, I'm gonna have to pick your brush up at some point. So when I do like curvy lines, I do part, then I pick up, then I pick up, then I pick up. It doesn't have to be one complete flow. A brush does not always work like a pencil. And even practice with your pressure. Use a lot of pressure and get really, really dark lines because there'll be more water going into the paper that you're practicing on. Or then try and use really um, light pressure and get the paper barely wet. 
because I can totally understand um, not wanting to waste paint. Like when I practice, I used to feel that way too, but when I, I feel like now when I practice, my practice always has a purpose, and that is, you know, to help others and become better at painting. Um, so I feel like my practice has a little bit more purpose now, and I try not to feel like I'm wasting paint, but I could understand why you would think that. Um, so yeah, I still practice certain things, and I'll just get out a color that I hardly use or that I don't really love or whatever. Or sometimes I, I'll get like a new brush and I wanna see, because a brush, like a tool for anything else, makes a difference. So I wanna see how much pressure, because depending on how springy your brush is, like I have brushes of mine that are favorite. If you looked at my brushes, you'd probably be, think they all look the same. But I have brushes that are favorites and brushes that like I never use, not that I'll throw them away, but that I just don't like the way they work. So yeah, brushes are different, and so I need to know how much pressure I could apply to a certain brush to get the effect I need. I think being able to trace the design, yes, it totally makes it easier. I want to, I see, did you say you're going to paint the watermelon too? I want to paint the watermelon. I loved the watermelon. And um, I really like the pineapple. I should paint the pineapple as well. I hope she does more of that with her patterns because that was great. She's so good. Like, I don't, I don't have an eye like that. Like, when I look at the pattern, I see the pattern. And it was so good to see, like, she broke it up into what the pattern is comprised of. The pine one is the pineapple and the one was the watermelon. And so, oh wait, was the watermelon one? No, she didn't paint the other one she showed us that she was gonna do. I forget what was on the other one. Apples maybe? I don't know. But anyway, when I look at that, when I look at those patterns, I look at them as a whole. So I was really impressed and said, oh my gosh. I have to look at those and other things, not just those patterns, differently. And be like, oh, so you could just zero in on that element. Yeah, I don't have an eye like that. So, so now we have our hat. And um, all our background lines. Didn't it look cute, you guys? Yeah, we should ask her when she's doing the next one. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, Samantha, has an amazing eye for detail and things. She sees things that I didn't even realize were there half the time. Okay. So, let me get out my lime green. You need some lime green, honey? Oh, you got it? I got it. Oh, look at you just moving ahead. So, I get out my lime green. I am still using this same half-inch brush. And I am going to now do a little bit of his body. And again, I am following the um, image that I shared with all you guys. If I were to paint this again, I might change up my colors a little bit. I think my daughter is changing up her colors, so I will post her picture for sure. But I feel like I know when I was just getting started, um, you don't want to think about colors and change and differences and stuff. So this way I will paint it the same color. And when you guys paint it the same color, you'll be comparing apples and apples or surfer dude and surfer dude. Sometimes when I do my in-person class, I will bring all the supplies for the project that we're doing that night when I do my paint and sips or my classes at the library. Um, I bring the supplies and the paint we need, but I always bring like this giant toolbox thing. I'm loving that green with this. With, rest, with more colors and there's always one person who wants a different color. 
And then it kind of confuses everyone. So, okay, so I have my lime green. I'm still using this brush. And um, depending on the size of your lines, the size canvas you use, um, whatever you're painting on, you might want to change your brush. I don't, this is a little thick, but I'm going to kind of use it on an angle and I'm going to make these lines a brush wide and just pull it down. Again, I was running out of paint. This might be something that um, you need to do in more than one stroke. And that's fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. Okay. My green is in fact a little bit thicker than my line is drawn, but I don't mind that. There's no reason to make yourself nuts trying to be perfect and stay in the line. Um, I can have a somewhat of a type A personality. Next time you need to. Oh my God, that would be so awesome, Amy. I should. Oh my goodness, I should do it and we should do it at the shop. What do you think? Um, yeah, there's no reason to make yourself nuts trying to stay in these little narrow lines. It's okay if you go out a little bit. This one was a little skinny, so I'm using my brush on my chisel edge. It still ends up being wider, and that is okay. Once we do our gnome, and we add in all the details and the highlights and a little bit of shading, nobody's gonna care that your green lines were more than a quarter inch thick. It is about the process. I thought the same thing would be so. Yes, that would be so much fun. So I'm just going in here, and I can use my brush on a little bit of a diagonal. So it's not quite flat, and it's not quite chisel edge, just to get it in here. And this is why I'm doing, look at how cool the edge looks, you guys. This is why I'm doing my edge as I go along because it really looks good when it's done. I fixed that green, I mean that black, but that's okay. I was going to do this guy or a similar guy on beach oars, like metal, I uh, mean wood paddles. Michaels has these decorative wood paddles that are like oars for a boat. And I was going to do this, him on that at a local place, and then I didn't hear back from the woman. I thought it would have been such a good idea. Oh well. Oh, just reminds me, I was supposed to tell my husband something I forgot. Somebody called for him yesterday. Oopsie. Yeah. Said, remind me to tell Richie about the phone call yesterday. Okay. Yeah. I'm loving these colors, you guys. Well, you all know patina. Patina has been my color for... Um, most of 2021 and it looks like for 2022 as well. If you see, I'll show you guys something. My brush is starting to get a little clumpy. So I'm gonna take it over here and I'm gonna just put a little bit of pressure and wipe it off. And basically I say it's like fixing the hair. You don't want to have crazy messy hair. And then I'm going to go back to my paint and I'm going to start all over again. My brush is getting a little thick. I had to straighten it out and now it looks much better. 
and I can be more in control of my lines again. They were starting to get a little wonky and so I needed to just do a little hair keep in there, a little styling. I really don't even mind how I had to fix these lines here for my segments. I know they're a little skinny over here as opposed to there, but it's working, I think. Oh, missed a piece there. What color is that? I think that's blue. I think that little corner of blue in there. And we always do these backgrounds first. So when we get to our surfboard or our flowers and our highlights, it kind of, you know, it touches up everything. If there's something you're not happy with, then we get to make our adjustments then when we do our details. So last night, I did the Zoom class with the Floral Bee. It was so good. It was so good. And then I was so inspired. I had wanted to paint it before the class so I could show the people in the class um, what it was going to look like. Because the bee, um, it's over, you guys can see it. So that's one I painted pre-class, one I painted during the class. But I'm going to also be doing a butterfly and a dragonfly. And when I was so inspired, um, so Amy, it is, I will be listing it on my website because once I'm done with the Zoom, then I put it on the website so you can get the recording or, and you can even, um, the recording comes with the supply list and the tracer as well. But I was so inspired after getting off with the B that I already did the tracer and designed the butterfly because that's also going to that's going to be a series of three it was the um the bumblebee next i'll be doing the butterfly and then next i will be doing the dragonfly so my butterfly was like i was tired but i'm like oh my goodness i just have to do it so there we go look at that already you guys it looks so cute So I'm going to put out some white now. Okay. And I think I'm going to, um, I'm going to do my beard. I know I'm going to do my beard. I might also base coat the entire surfboard. We'll see as I go along. So I'm doing his whole beard in white, but then I'm going to add a little bit of gray to it, and I'm going to do the gray by mixing um, a little bit of black, a little bit of black into our white. Black goes a really long way, and you can always add more, um, but black can be a little bit overpowering in paint, and you could always add more. So you just actually want to do like a tiny, tiny bit. You'll be amazed how much um, little black paint you need to make something gray. Yeah, I think I am going to just do a quick base coat of my surfboard. And already, you see how I'm coming in here with the white? It already cleans up the edges. And because it's only one coat of white, we will still be able to see our lines. If when you do your um, paint yours, if you don't want stripes on your surfboard, feel free to leave your surfboard solid. Feel free to use the tracer 
and just do your surfboard um, solid and then add one or two flowers to it to match the hat. That would look good too. You'll have the tracer, you can do it. Um, that one would fit, you could do two of those. It's up to you, whatever you wanna do, but there we go. So, now I'm going to just take, well, I'm gonna put a little bit of white over here. I'm gonna move some white. I'm separating my white here. The very, very corner, the tiniest, tiniest corner of black. Look at that. It's like a tick, it's so small. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna mix it with my white and I don't even want to over mix it. I'm just like patting around. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add in. I'm just going to pull up lightly, pull up some of this gray paint that I made on my brush over my white that's already wet. Not too dark. We wanna just give our beard a little bit of dimension. You guys can't really see that, but look at that now. Let me see, can you see that? Yeah, I know. Let's do this. There we go. Okay. Just want to add a little dimension. So we've done our black, our lines. See how this is here? Not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix that. We're gonna start adding in our flowers and all our details now, and you're gonna see how the entire um, design is gonna like all of a sudden come to life. I want to just get a little bit under here on his nose a little bit because I don't want such a harsh line there. And there we go. Okay. So now we can get on to our surfboard. We have a little bit of um, purple. Another reason you might want to just do your surfboard to match, maybe you don't want to be using all these colors. Maybe you don't need to have purple out or whatever. Then you know what? Just do what you want. That's why if you want to just make your surfboard the same color as the hat and put a few white or magenta flowers on it, go right ahead. I'm concentrating, you guys. I have to be quiet when I concentrate. There we go. Okay. So I did the purple lines. Now I'm going to add some green lines next to them. I could wait for my purple to dry, but I'm not. If I pick up some purple, it'll just blend a little bit. When you're doing it, you could wait or you can hit it with the hair dryer. Or you can do every other stripe like I should have been doing, but I'm being impatient. There we go. I like these colors. 
and then we just have I didn't um, trace these out or anything but I'm just using my brush I'm just giving a small push and it's just making a design in the middle of the surfboard that's it make sure my lines are good here yeah okay then I'm going to get the patina I'm going to do my outline so I stay within the beard like over here too I have that patina but now I have that part and now I will fill it in Anybody have plans this weekend for 4th of July? I think we're going on Sunday to my brother-in-law's house. Hey, Tina. Nice to see you. Thank you. Okay. We still have some details to add there to our um, surfboard and stuff, but we're not going to do that yet. I'm going to add... A little bit of white and my lime green here because I want a little bit of a different color to do his shoes I could have done them black but then the black would get lost on one of his shoes I could do them white but I didn't really want to do them white so I think this light green looks good and I just took some white I added a little bit of light green a little bit of the green to it Gave it a big mix over here, and that's it. This way, too, we're not having a whole nother color in our palette. Fill them in. So we did his shoes. Okay. Put out a little magenta. I have some white. And I'm going to start doing the flowers now. Okay. So, let's review. Let's review. So, we started out with our black segments. Then we did our patina ones, the blue ones. Then we let that dry a little bit and we filled in the hat with the fire coral. Then I went back and I did the, um, the lime green for his body and all the lines. And while I did that, I did my edges with the corresponding colors as well. Because look how cool that side looks. Isn't that fun? I need to fix this one black one, but that's okay. All right? Then we went in and we did his beard in white. And then we mixed a little bit of black, a tiny bit of black into our brush to give his um, beard some dimension and some contrast in there. And then we did the colors. We base coated the surfboard and his beard. We had a little bit of gray to his beard and then we added the design to our surfboard. Okay. Now I put out a little bit of this magenta color. You can use a fuchsia. Um, you could do them. In, I think the purple would look good too if you just wanted to do the purple. Again, I'm still using this same half inch brush and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to fill in my hibiscus. Hibiscus is nothing more than two ends. A huge N on top and then the little N upside down U, whatever you want to call it, in the bottom. Sometimes when I paint hibiscus freehand, um, 
I will double load my brush and I will just paint them in with one stroke. Or I have a really nice, you guys know, I love shortcuts. I have a really nice um, hibiscus stencil and I will use that occasionally and I will just lightly pounce in the hibiscus where I want them with either a soft pink or a white color and then I will go in and paint over them with whatever color I want to make them. So that's one hibiscus. And then two. And again, this is why it didn't matter if we went outside the lines a little bit when we were painting our background of our hat. We do these details last so it fixes up anything that may have gotten a little wonky during the base coat. And it's paint, we can fix anything. I'm even going to fill this one in. On the picture, it looked very dark, but I want my flowers to match, so I'm going to fill this one in with the magenta as well. So any place where we went over on the lines, we're fixing it now by adding in these details at the end. And again, I'm not going to worry about these white spots, and you will see why in a minute. Okay. Oh, did you guys see that? I was kind of holding it up so I could see it. Sorry. Now, while my brush is a little wet still, I'm going to pick up some white and I want to make a little bit of a softer pink for his nose. If it's too dark, I'll pick up some more white. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to pick up some of this um, coral. So I added a little bit of the fire coral to the light pink I made and painted his nose in there or her nose, whichever, whatever. Okay, now I am going to switch my brush. Oh, you know what I want to do first? I want to fix this little piece here on the, on the black. Voila. So, um, I've said this before, I know there's a few new people on here watching. It's paint. If there's something that you don't like, it's wonky, you want to change it, adjust it, whatever, be, be, be patient. Be as patient as you can be because you want it to dry completely. You want it to completely dry. And then you can go back in with whatever color you wanted to fix and paint right over it. If you are blending, you want everything wet. You want your base wet. You want the paint in your brush wet. You want the colors you're blending wet. And you want to keep it wet. I usually do not add water. The only time I add water to my acrylic paint is when I'm using my liner brush. Um, I do sometimes use, I don't think I have any of it. Oh here, I do sometimes use this floating medium. I like this for thinning up the paint. Um, and this is the, the body of what is in paint to begin with before they add the color. So I will use this, but I won't usually use water. The only time I use water is when I'm using a liner brush, which I'm going to be using now. So I'm going to start with my black. When I use a liner brush, I like to twirl it because we want to have a nice, fine 
point. Okay? And now I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to start adding just a few outlines. I'm going to go around his outfit, his pants, his little gnome skirt, whatever it is, his shoes, his beard, and I am going to add a little bit of water to my black. Cause see, I, would, I don't know, can you see how it's skipping? I want my line to be a little bit, um, have more coverage than that. So when you want, when you use your liner brush, you don't want the paint to be really, really wet and thin and dripping, but you want it to be a little bit thicker. You want it to be, like they say, an inky consistency. There we go. I am going to do around the surfboard. Oh, I forgot that little piece of patina. Let me go back in there and get that. I'm going to do around the surfboard. Sometimes it's nice to be have a place to rest your hand. Like I'm resting my hand right now on my work surface. And again, I didn't do this whole thing in one swoop. I jumped around a little bit, I did a part, then I picked up more paint, and I did more of a part, but again here. There we go, I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, I'm gonna do the border of my hat, and again, I have my wrist here. This is dry, so I can put my wrist on here. And I'm gonna do the edge of my hat and you don't have to do it all in one line and again this is why I said to you it didn't matter if you went out of the lines a little bit because when we go back in here and we start doing all these highlights and low lights it becomes very forgiving you need anything honey Need a little bit more water. Okay? Okay. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I will do the other side. go and then under here and over here okay I'm gonna wash out my liner brush and now we're going to go in and we're gonna start doing some well, let's do a little bit of shadow under here okay there we go now we're gonna go in and we're gonna start doing the same thing we just did with the black but this time we're going to do it with some white. And when I do the white, I usually don't do complete lines. I just do some swishes. And then we want a highlight on his nose. I'm going to add some white swishes, highlighting the outside of our board. We can add some white switches inside our board. And this is very tiny pulls of the brush. Again, I'm adding some white around the side of the hat edge. And none of these are complete circles. They're just little highlights. Some connect, some don't, some are thicker. Some are thinner. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add the centers 
to my hibiscus. And I do that by, I lay down the brush and I pull, 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 and then I stand up. And we're going to outline our flowers, the outside part, the inside part. And again, these outlines do not have to be perfect. It's just some highlighting. And this is exactly why I said you didn't have to worry about if your flowers weren't perfect, filled in perfect. Because now when we come in here with our white, it makes a huge difference covers up anything that we thought was like wonky. When I do this, I'm just following the basic shape of the petals of the hibiscus. And then I'm going to add a center to this guy. So then my petals all have somewhere to go. See how I did that? And I'll add the rounds now. So I put in the center with some dots. Then I added the segments to divide up my petals. And then I just highlighted the outsides there. And then when we have hibiscus, we like to add these little dots here. So I use the back of the brush. And I just add in some dots in the center. And then sometimes down along. I think that's the stamen of a hibiscus, but I'm not sure. There we go. And then we want a little, I'm going to put a little bit of a swish on both of his shoes. And I think, I think that's it, you guys. I think we got it. Hey there, Lisa. How are you, honey? I haven't talked to you, but it looked like you had a great, great family trip. A little beach trip for you guys. You, you probably think it was ages ago, but I remember you being at the beach and being like, oh, I'm so jealous. Okay. Let me turn you guys around. So here we go. Let me see the um, peach one right there by you. I mean the spring one right there by you, Sid. What? Let me see the other. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. So this is the second gnome in our series. This was the spring one. Peekaboo. So this is the spring one we did. I think it's in April. It's in the guides. And this is now our... Um, thanks, Sherry. I'm good. Very good, Lisa. I'm so happy to have some nice weather now. Thanks, Amy. Um, and this is our surfer dude. Isn't that cool? My daughter's still painting on hers. Um, I will post a picture of mine and hers because I think, oh, yeah, she used um, different colors. She used a very different palette. So you guys are going to like it. And then this was our spring one. Oh, you know what I forgot? Now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, why is one hat much busier than the other? I know why. So let's fix that. I mean, you we could leave it, but I'm not gonna. So I'm gonna get my liner brush out. I'm gonna pick up some white, and I'm just going to add a few. <coughs> they're almost like, they come across as stripes, but they're more like wrinkles. And when I do them, I like to go from both ends. So I'm starting on, so I started there, then I started that one over here. There. I think that's a little bit more um, interesting. What do you think? There we go. Okay. Ta-da! Now... Now, there we go. Let's do it over again. So here we have our Surfer Dude Beach Gnome. Okay. Anyway, so there we go. Spring, 
Our spring one had hands, but I'm not going to give hands. He's holding the surfboard with his hands. And um, next up will be our fall one. Not next, in the fall, September of October. I don't know what I'm going to be doing for July yet. I will be posting that this weekend. Um, I will be putting up everything for July. July's step-by-step. -step. Um, July's Zoom. July's kit for the step-by-step. -step. And I guess that's it and my new July calendar, okay? So thank you, thank you, thank you guys for joining me. I love sharing out from my heart. I love hanging out with y'all. I love when you guys hang out with me. Share your photos, you guys. Share, share, share your photos. Don't be shy. It's a private group. We're all here to support each other. I'm here to support you. Um, share your photos, okay? Love it. Anyway. Have a great night, everyone. Oh, tomorrow night. I posted in here as well. Catch me on Talk Shop, Talk Shop Live. Can't even talk. Talk Shop Live tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. The link is on this page. I'll probably post it again tomorrow to remind y'all. Um, I'm going to be showing, which you might have seen before, but I'm showing a cool technique. And I'm selling um, two different kits, two different patriotic kits around, and then the um, window box. Okay, so... Love you guys. Have a great night and I'll talk to y'all soon.